Hello, and welcome to Communicate Confidently with three strategic storytelling skills. <clears throat> We're absolutely delighted that you are here this evening and uh, have total confidence that we're going to give you great value for the time you spend with us. By the end of our hour, uh, you'll be very aware of a skill that, when done right, uh, is a game changer. It has the potential to be uh, life and business changing. You'll also know some of the first steps you need to take in order to develop this skill. I'm Roger Killen, your host. Now you might be thinking, am I in the right place? Well, here's some conditions and when you meet them, you will know that yes, you are in the right place. Firstly, are you an ambitious business person who wants to achieve exceptional results? Are you perhaps a type A personality who eats data for breakfast and you want to be a bit warmer and more engaging? Do you run meetings? Do you lead teams? Do you have to inspire audiences of one or many? Do you find networking excruciatingly painful, a social embarrassment? Do you fear being vulnerable or looking stupid? Are you putting your audiences to sleep and you want to dazzle them with memorable presentations? Do you do a lot of public speaking and perhaps you don't enjoy it as much as you'd like? Do you, want, do, do, do you desire to get traction for your ideas? Do you desire to expand your influence and impact? Differentiate yourself from the other people that you're working with in order to become that much more promotable. If you've met any of those conditions, you're in the right place. Let's uh, do a couple of little housekeeping items first. Please turn off your distractions. When I said that the skill of, story, of storytelling is a game changer, is life changing, I actually meant it. And you're going to hear in the next hour a lot of information about the why and the how of business storytelling. Buckle up, don't miss it. Don't lose this opportunity to listen, to learn, uh, and, uh, to, and to think deep, deeply about the whole subject of storytelling. You're encouraged to take notes. Yes, you're going to get a copy, a recording of this video, but nevertheless, your simple act of taking notes will increase, increase your absorption and retention of this content by approximately 30%. So it's highly encouraged that you do that. Toward the end of our talk, uh, we're going to invite you to join the Business Storytelling Masterclass that starts in January. So get ready for an irresistible offer. If you stay with us for the duration of the talk, which is from now until eight o'clock, you'll receive a gift that we know you'll love. It takes the form of two tools that will help you become a better storyteller. If you have questions, please type them into the chat, but type them into the chat as private messages to Renee. We want to be able to find them at eight o'clock in order to honor them and answer them fully. Now we'll stay beyond eight o'clock. We'll stay for as long as it takes to answer all your questions, but we won't be able to get to your questions until we've covered the content that we'd like to cover. A little bit of an introduction about me. <clears throat> I'm Roger Killen. After about 30 years as a serial entrepreneur, I uh, uh, hit the age of 60 and I cast about for a legacy project a project that would allow me uh, to create something that would be around long after I'm not. This led me into two, uh, two ventures. The first was TEDx Stanley Park, and the second was Vancouver Business Network. TEDx Stanley Park grew into one of the world's largest TEDx events. Our last event almost filled the 2,600 seat Queen Elizabeth Theatre, in downtown Vancouver, which is in British Columbia, Western Canada. Uh, TEDx Stanley Park then morphed into Get Inspired Talks, Inc. 
While TEDx Stanley Park was all about ideas worth spre uh, spreading, Get Inspired Talks is all about ideas solving problems. As for Vancouver Business Network, it is now the largest business organization on North America's West Coast. We provide free training to our 17,000 members twice a week to uh, help them build better businesses. Then we share the recording of their training globally on our YouTube channel. The whole purpose of Vancouver Business Network is to help entrepreneurs around the world to build better businesses. We have an agenda for you. Short words, six of them. The Q&A is likely to happen after eight o'clock. Let's start with the intro. <clears throat> you remember that very rich man, Warren Buffett? He said lots of cool things, but one of the cool things he said was, one easy way to become worth 50% more than you are now is to hone your communication skills. What are communication skills? Well, very simply, they're the, uh, they're the collection of skills that enable us to send and receive messages effectively and efficiently. These skills include uh, speaking, listening, writing, singing, gesturing, making eye contact, vocal variety, pausing, pausing pacing, and many other uh, skills. Storytelling is also one of those skills. It's perhaps the most undervalued and underutilized of the communication skills. Renee and I believe that we were all born to inspire and that storytelling is the best way to achieve that. The core message that Renee and I want to share with you uh, this evening is this, well-crafted, well-told and relevant stories connect with your listeners' emotions to influence how they feel, how they think, and how they act. I'm going to repeat that. Well-crafted, well-told, and relevant stories connect with your listeners' emotions to influence how they feel, how they think, and how they act. Imagine the action that you'd make happen. Imagine the problems that you'd solve. Imagine the results that you'd get if you could really, at the heart level, connect with people to influence how they feel, how they think, and how they act. Done right, stories make this happen. I'm, I, I, I witness magic happen frequently in my role as the organizer of Vancouver Business Network. When I encounter a speaker who is also a skilled storyteller, they pair relevant information with real life experiences to make action happen, to solve problems and to get great results. On the other hand, non-storytellers have much, much less impact. Now, what is a good story and what dif differentiates it from a bad story? A good business story has two defining characteristics. First, it is a solution to a re relevant problem. And second, it engages emotions. The vast majority of what are called stories don't in fact have any of these characteristics. They are incident reports, they are shopping lists, but they are not stories. Good stories are rare. Let's now talk about the why. Remember you were promised the why and the how of business stories. I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Renee Jacobs. Renee is the Director of Speaker Training and Curriculum Development for Get Inspired Talks. She's a retired eye doctor, a business consultant, a distinguished Toastmaster, and believe it or not, yes, she is the reigning District 96 humorous speech champion. She believes that anyone can harness the power of business stories to earn connection and trust. And they are the foundation of all relationships and especially business relationships. 
Over to you, Renee, take it away. All right, hello. So I'm here to talk about why, why this three uh, strategies for storytelling. And I thought I'd start just by dialing it down to you. Take a moment and you've got a pen ready. On a scale of one to 10, I have a question for you. How confident are you that if you were the team lead, you're standing in front of a meeting, how confident are you that you can connect and build trust and that people in that meeting will adopt your ideas? And here's another one on a scale of, of one to 10. How about the possible upcoming company Christmas party or some such? How confident are you that when you have an opportunity to make a first impression with someone that can advance your career, that you can build that connection and trust? And again, on a scale of one to 10, when you think of potential clients maybe in your business, how confident are you that you can build that connection and trust so they want to work with you, so they see you as a unique value proposition? See, that's what this talk is about this evening. Confident communication. And I'm reminded of someone that you might know, uh, Dr. Roger Wong, and Lyle Povich might remember him. Dr. Wong is on the faculty at UBC, University of uh, British Columbia. And he and I were working together on his stories in preparation for his TEDx talk, TEDx Stanley Park. And after our third meeting, talking about the stories, how to craft them, we were standing in the hallway, waiting for the elevator to go to the bottom floor. And Dr. Wong confides in me, he says, when they bring the new medical students in on the first day of orientation. They put them all in a room for orientation day. And the administrators always book Dr. Wong to speak after lunch. He said, it's cathartic, they're nervous, it's their first day, but then they get through the first half, they have lunch and after lunch, they fall asleep. He knows from experience, they put him at this place and he falls asleep. But he said, Renee, I thought I'd try something different. I thought I'd try stories. You wouldn't believe it. Not only did the medical students stay awake, but at the break, people lined up to talk to me. What a change. And I offer that to you. Are you someone who feels like you're just boring? And it has to be that way. Or do you tolerate really boring speakers without thinking, hey, they could do better? Because storytelling can make that difference. So that was one person talking to a group. Now, another person you might know in this group, because it's a networking group, you might know Susan Jarma. She's in the Grand Connection Networking Group, one of those founding members. And she also has a marketing business, New Earth Marketing. They build websites. They do SEO, search engine optimization. I met Susan in the class that comes after this Confidently Communicate session. This is followed up by support, a course called Business Storytelling Masterclass. It's a six week online course that includes some coaching and practice and peer groups. And that's where I met Susan. And she said, I get on these uh, customer discovery calls and what I need is to earn connection and trust, but a lot faster with something complicated because when you build a complicated custom website, there are a lot of moving parts and the fee structure is kind of complicated. So I remember that's where she started. And I remember a couple of weeks into business storytelling masterclass 
when Susan announced, I did it. I was on a client call. I talked about <clears throat> when my child got the difference between basic Leb Legos and Legos Pirates of the Caribbean. And it was almost instant, the friendship that we made. And it was easy to understand the complexity and the fees. That little metaphor, the analogy, boom, made all the difference in how quickly a new client, a new potential client, makes the decision to become a client. And Susan has another lovely story that I heard in peer group where she talks about SEO. And she tells when she was in the sixth grade, her dad taught her to play chess. She was a beginner. So he taught her how to win in three moves. And three move chess took her right to the top until everybody else figured it out. And she said, when she explains search engine optimization like that, people get it. That is the power of story. That's why business storytelling is a critical skill. So I talked with you about Dr. Wong presenting to a big group. You can be fascinating and engaging. And then I talked with you about Susan using, using business storytelling to show that you are a unique value proposition. When Susan uses her own stories from her own daily life, you get to know her in a new and different way. And you know, that's the person I love. That's the person I wanna work with. And you can do that in small groups and you can do that one-on-one -on -one as well. So that's why Roger and I put together this talk, communicate confidently with three strategic storytelling strategies. This is why Roger and I have the piece that comes next, Business Storytelling Masterclass, and he'll tell you more about that. This is why we believe you were born to inspire. Now, I've talked about why storytelling is a critical skill for business. And Roger, I wonder if you want to add a little bit more before I move into the how. I'm, I would be delighted to, but right now you're covering all my notes. So I have no access to my notes. I'm covering your notes. Yes, you are. I don't know how I did that. Should you, I just, if I just, I'm going to let Cindy in. Should I just unshare and then you can share? Okay, that's good. Now I'm uh, back on track. All right. And so did you share your, 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 well, you look great to me. All right. All right. So I talked about why, and I'm going to talk about how, but before I do, do you have more to add to the why business storytelling is a critical? I was skill? born with more to add. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> Audience, before Renee tells you about the how, I'd like to describe a lesson that I learned on the hard anvil of experience. Gary Vaynerchuk says that storytelling is the most underrated skill when it comes to business. The late Steve Jobs said, the most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. Seth Godin chimed in with, marketing is no longer about the stuff that you make, but about the stories that you tell. These business authorities and many, many others know what it, uh, uh, know a truism which it took me 10 years to figure out. I wasn't born a storyteller. In fact, I thought stories were really quite silly. No serious business person would tell stories, right? Well, all that changed for me in February 2011. I'm standing at the front of the conference room at the Best Western Hotel in Whitehorse in the Yukon Territory, which is in Northwestern Canada. There are 21 entrepreneurs in the audience. I recognize about 15 of them from two years ago when I was last in Whitehorse. Now I'm looking confident. 
but inwardly, I feel beaten up and beaten down. Why aren't they getting it? I want to reduce the failure rate for startups. You know the stats, over 90% of startups fail within a few years, while at the same time, 90% of franchisees are successful. I want startups to adopt some of franchisees' best practices. And if I could make that happen, I could debunk the myth that a 90% startup failure rate is inevitable. If I could improve startup success rates, I could change regions, which would change countries, which would change the world. Now, wouldn't that make for a wonderful legacy? I had been a serial entrepreneur with 12 startups under my belt. I had enjoyed success across multiple industries, ranging from mortgages to house building, safety equipment, financial planning, fish farm technology, and yes, even beneficial insects. I was financially independent at 50. I developed a system that I called the strategic startup system. This is a binder from back in the day. This is the strategic startup system. The strategic startup system is a highly disciplined system in which entrepreneurs target specific milestones in a specific sequence. With this system, they could build robust startups in much less time and at a fraction of the capital cost. Government agencies and universities were excited and they engaged me to teach the strategic startup system in regions throughout British Columbia and the Yukon. For 10 years, I delivered three-day seminars to entrepreneurs throughout those two regions. I was very proud of the content that I could pack into each three-day seminar. They called me the content king. And I wore that moniker like a badge of honor. In hindsight, I see that my audiences were overwhelmed by the first coffee break on the first day. And here I am, back in Whitehorse for the third time in nine years. Same town, same people, back for more of the same content. I'd given it my all. I expected change by now, but no traction, no successful startups, no myth debunked. I felt defeated. At the close of that seminar, I knew I needed to do more worthwhile work. This content king was turning in his crown. It didn't occur to me until later that being a content king was in fact my core problem. I had spent 10 years overwhelming people with facts, data, logic, and statistics. I know now that content kings don't inspire people to take action because facts, data, logic, and statistics simply don't inspire. I want to say thank you to Roger for sharing that, which is um, a classic fail story. And when you listen, if you're like me, it hurts. And it hurts on a lot of levels because you can have a great idea and a big desire. And when you think of the money spent and you think of Roger's 10 years wanting to help entrepreneurs succeed in pre increase their success rate that it, it, it hurts but when you think that he had the tools he's got the book and his idea just doesn't get traction you don't get influence you don't get impact that's the pain. 
And that's where learning to use story in business to engage so that you inspire people to lean in, to listen, to, to, to take your ideas and move them into action, inspire people to want to work with you. That is the power of story. So I, I thank Roger for sharing that. Now I'm going to move from why stories into how we do this uh, three strategic storytelling skills, the how. And I'm going to do it as a countdown. Three, two, one. Countdown two, have your story ready so it does what you want it to do in business. Get your idea across. Be interesting and engaging. Whatever it is where you're falling short in your communication, that's what your story can do. So we'll go three, two, one. And the first step, the third step, number three, <laughs> first thing is notice story worthy moments in your life. Are you one of these people? You, you've got this chance to speak and you've got information, data, logic, you've got things you're gonna share, but you wanna be interesting. And I know people who do this and this used to be me. I would go into this kind of black hole of time thinking, I wonder if there's a joke I could open with. Or there are some really smart quotes because I don't have enough authority to, to get this rolling on my own and I want to be interesting. Or maybe there's a story or some little bit of history that I can tie to this. Well, wouldn't it be great if you just have your own anecdotes, little things that happen in your life that are unique, original, and fascinating? Now, remember Susan, how she went to the Lego stories with her children? You have stories like that in daily life, but they're probably just washing over you. So I want to talk to you about how do you capture them? Because one of the most phenomenal things is to work with someone and have them after one week say, I had no idea I had so much story material. Here's where it all begins. You're going along in your day and it hits you as you've got some emotion, something tied up in emotion. It could be surprise, it could be anger, it could be anything. Then you notice that and think to yourself, hey, could this be a story worthy moment? And it can be little tiny things. And I was talking with Roger, he says, people don't understand how simple this could be. And so of course I took that as a challenge Today, I kind of walked around thinking, will I, will I see a possible story? And here's what I saw. I walked in my kitchen and my husband had this bottle with a line on it and some writing. And I looked at the writing and I went, why did he write 2021 upside down and put a line on this bottle? We bought some oil yesterday because he's going to change out the oil in the lawnmower. And I thought, is he going to pour the oil in here and then keep it until 2021? What is he doing? So I go into his office. Sweetheart, what are you up to? And he says, actually, that is 12 ounces. <laughs> if you look at the world upside down, <laughs> things will look different. He bought more oil than will fit in the lawnmower. When he takes out the old oil, much of it will be burned down and he wants to be sure that he puts in the right amount. So it's a 12 ounce mark. And this is an exact quote. Renee, if you stand on your head, the world looks different. You are bothering me. Now, just think for a moment to yourself, could that be a story, a story worthy moment? It's got emotion. And the way I decide, can I use a personal experience for story is to ask myself the next question. And this is the question I have for you. Can you link that anecdote, that personal experience? Can you link that to a business message? 
How about when one person has incomplete knowledge and the other person has complete knowledge, there can be some confusion. How's that for a message? How about your perspective and my perspective might be different and that can lead to confusion. How about that? Possible. If none of those seem to work, you could even just go with the really straightforward message, uh, reuse and recycle, right? Personal things that happen in your daily life are uniquely you. Original, authentic, sometimes humorous. And if you use those things in your business, people feel like they know you. Now, not all stories are great stories. You can tie it to a business message, but if you're thinking, what are the really, really good stories? How do I recognize those? You know, Roger shared with you um, a fail story very powerful fail story. When you're thinking of crafting your stories or noticing stories in your daily life, how do you notice the really good ones? When you were a kid, when you think back to elementary school, when you learned about stories, did you have one of these story plot diagrams like this? Does that look familiar to you? They said, it starts with the setting and then there's this rising action and that leads to a climax when after this, nothing can ever be the same. And then there'll be a resolution. Do you remember that? In studying story, I found this to be very confusing because I thought rising action meant a flurry of activity. <coughs> if that's not the case. Remember I said, it's emotion. If you change up the way of thinking and think of it just a little bit differently, instead of rising action, it's rising emotion. You have feelings like, why is this bottle here? Uh, you have questions. It leads to a desire, uh, taking an action. So instead of thinking of rising action, think of a good story has rising emotions. It makes you want something. In Roger's story, Roger wanted to make a difference, to increase success rates for entrepreneurs, right? In the Roger Wong story that I shared, he wanted medical students to be interested. So he decided to do something, use stories. The best stories are you've got some dilemma that leads you to make a decision and take action. And I call that the heart. I call that the heart of the story. So that's where you begin noticing great stories. I can give you another short example. Duff Gardner lives in Victoria and he has a digital marketing company. And he was putting together a campaign, a marketing campaign. And he's feeling really fatigued and just needed a break so he took his dog for a walk in the forest and on the walk pulls out his phone and on Facebook, his friend in Saskatchewan has posted this fall challenge, beard, no beard. And Duff thinks to himself, I need to do my headshot for my marketing campaign. I'm thinking a lot about how to show up. People think a lot about how to show up when they're doing digital marketing. So he says, I'm gonna post it. And he posts the beard picture and the no beard picture. When he got back from the walk, he said, I had to sit down on the couch because the responses were pouring in. One says, no more scruffy duffy. We like you clean shaven. And the next one says, ooh, bearded bad boy that's the way we like you and he sits down and he looks and scrolls what is the answer how should he show up in his marketing campaign and it turns out to be a 50 50 split now i just shared with you a 90 second personal experience 
that can now be tied to a business message. It's an example because he wanted something. He wants a break, but he also wants to know how should he show up in his digital marketing campaign. That leads to a decision and an action, do the post. And that leads to a result. Oh my, it's 50-50. Now think of this. Here's someone that teaches marketing. And in the method, one of, them, one of the things you do to be attractive is your appearance, your headshot, how you show up. But there are four other things. Your journey, your process, and there's even more. You see, so Duff Gardener now has a personal experience that takes about 90 seconds to share. And he can use it in the opening of presentations or when talking with a client, bringing them into the work that he does. So this is the power of story. And this is how you can notice story worthy moments. Now let's move to the next step. Strategically craft and edit your story. Once you have an idea, I think this could be a good story. The next step is to strategically craft and edit. Are you one of those people who says, wow, my life is so complicated. I just can't tell the story and, and keep it short enough to use it in a business meeting. Well, I have a way to do that. Most people start at the beginning of their day. I got in the car and then I drove five miles and the sun was out and I, they go on and on and they don't get to the point. If you want to be interesting, fascinating, engaging, so people lean in and want to hear your story, you craft the story, edit the story for high engagement. You can do it. And here's how. Instead of starting at the beginning when you're crafting the story, the first part to nail down is the desire. I want something. I'm having some emotions around it. That leads to decision and action. So that uh, on this on the uh, plot, it's that rising emotions. There's something I want. Okay, in the Duff Gardner story, I want to take a break, but I also want to put myself out there. I have to get my headshot, my marketing stuff together, and it leads to decision and action. Craft that part of your story first. Start with the heart of your story, craft that part first. And then here's the next step, move out of your heart to the surroundings. One single place, one single time in history. Remember Roger Killen's story, where did it happen? One place, do you remember? Best Western Conference Room, Dr. Wong's story, one single place. Student orientation on campus right after lunch, right? So that's the next step. And then once you have the surroundings, the place where the change happened, then you're ready to build the, the chronological order of your story. When did it happen? Where did it happen? And then what did you want? And the emotions around that. And then what was the action that you take? And then the result. Now, if you craft your business story using that format, you'll find you can be fascinating and thoroughly engaging. So we've talked about now how to notice moments and how to edit and craft so that you've got a highly engaging story. Now, so we're three, two, one, we're down to tell your story. I'm not doing this kind of work anymore, but I have been hired to go in, work with corporate people to teach them public speaking. And inevitably this would be the scenario. Someone has put a slide deck of information together and they have someone who's a little bit shy as a speaker and they hire me thinking that I'm gonna teach them how to walk confidently, use eye contact and pauses and gestures like, oh, 
touches me so deeply. The problem is they don't have engaging content to begin with, which will never be a problem for you because we've talked about how to create stories and you can weave them through information to be engaging. And the other piece is it's not real. Let's talk about how you tell. Empathy is what it's called when you connect with the listener. Empathy. And empathy, I explain it this way. Think of yourself as both a head and a body. Most people, especially professional people, connect with logic. You know, you understand my logic if I explain it a certain way, we connect that way. Most professionals and people who do speaking don't connect with the body channel of empathy. This is how that works. You've been with someone where you like them, you're connected, and they yawn, and their body looks kind of tired. And next thing you know, you're yawning, and you feel kind of tired. Or someone tells you a joke that is so hilarious. And then you go to retell the joke, and it falls flat. And you realize that joke was not even funny. What was funny is that the person who told the joke thought the joke was funny. And they were communicating the hilarity through their body and their emotions. When you tell your story, use your whole body and relive the experience. And that's how you connect with your listener. So telling is not becoming an actor. Telling is not being, being overly dramatic. It's absolutely being yourself. If you know, remember, you've got the logic, the head channel, but you've also got the body channel of empathy. And you can do it. You've got this. And like Roger and I have been saying, you were born with everything you need to truly inspire. So I've talked about three, two, one strategies, strate uh, strategies so that you can be a confident storyteller in business. When you stay until the end of this presentation today, we have a gift for you. And the gift is a bridge between this talk today and the Business Storytelling Masterclass. It's some tools to get you started with those three strategic storytelling skills. So I want you to stay in here about that. And with that, I'm going to hand back to Roger to carry forward. Thank you, Renee. I like the bottle. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Just a reminder to type any questions you've got into the chat as private messages to Renee. Uh, she and I will stick around for as long as it takes to answer each and every one of them. Renee and I believe, I'm going to repeat this, Renee and I believe that we were all born, you, me, she, all of us, we were born to inspire others. We believe that stories are the best channel, the best way to do that. With that in mind, I trust that it's okay for me to now invite you to become a more, a better storyteller, a better business storyteller, so that you can become more inspiring. And my mouse has decided to go slow. Business uh, Storytelling Masterclass is the vehicle that we feel is the best vehicle for you to use in order to develop strong storytelling skills, particularly strong business 
storytelling skills. Business Storytelling Masterclass will give you a couple of results. Our goal is to teach you how to fish and to give you fish. The give you fish bit takes the form of 15 one to four minute stories that are life experience based, that are tried, tested and found to be true and that you can use in a variety of business situations. But perhaps of even greater value is the lifetime skill that we want to give you, the lifetime skill of business storytelling. You can adopt that, adapt, adopt, adapt that for personal purposes. So you have an unlimited quantity of content that you can use for posts, for, uh, for, uh, for business stories and speeches, presentations. Uh, we all struggle for a shortage of content, but if you go through that process that Renee described and capture those life-changing, those, those life experience moments, uh, uh, you will have this infinite quantity of content. <clears throat> there is a form to the course. It, uh, it starts, one of the major element is the Monday night classes. The Monday night classes start at 5.30 Pacific time. Uh, they begin on New, uh, January the 11th, they end on February the 22nd. Uh, they're recorded, they last for one hour. Uh, and they're recorded so that if you happen to miss a class because of uh, difficult circumstances, you can always catch up. <clears throat> After each class, that's when you craft and tell several one to four minute uh, stories based upon lot, uh, what you've learned. Later that week, this applies to each of six weeks, later in each of those six weeks, you join a small peer group uh, to evaluate each other's stories. And your peer group is made up of you plus two other students, plus a facilitator from, uh, from the Get Inspired Talks team. The program ends with a three-day uh, showcase uh, that runs from February the 26th to February the 28th. And at that showcase, you'll have the opportunity to tell a polished story to a much larger audience than is your peer group. Uh, those audience members are made up of your peers, but many of them and uh, uh, all the team members from Get Inspired Talks. So you'll get another round of evaluations at that, uh, at that showcase. Your uh, tuition includes one hour of private coaching with uh, Renee. Uh, if you desire more coaching, that's probably possible. Uh, and uh, the fee will be a deeply discounted student rate. Business Storytelling Masterclass comes with a guarantee. 100% money back, no quibble. Uh, this expires at the end of the day on the second group class. The first group class is January the 11th, second group class is January the 18th. By then, you will have had no less than six touch points with us. So you'll be very well informed to know if Business Storytelling Masterclass is for you or not. Your investment in Business Storytelling Masterclass is $1,490, which can be paid in three installments of $597. For all us Canadians, bear in mind that those are in US dollars. And this begs the question, is this going to be great value for you? I want to answer that question in two ways. First, when TEDx Stanley Park and Get Inspired Talks speakers recruited professional coaches to prepare for their 12 to 16 minute speeches. It was very common for the tuition fee to come in at between five and $10,000. So we feel the answer is emphatically yes, a $1,490 program fee for double the coaching represents great value. The second way I want to answer that question is to ask you to reflect upon the amount of money your education has cost, your formal education. Very little of that formal education had anything to do with soft skill development. The key soft skill is communications. The key element of communications is storytelling. 
So if you think of business storytelling masterclass like a finishing school, where the tuition fee is $1,490, I think you'll appreciate uh, why our sentiment is that business storytelling masterclass and the storytelling skill that flows from it is, is your enabler, is your gatekeeper to allow you to fully leverage your formal education. We want to have the cohort for January the 11th all arranged by no later than December the 19th. We want that because we have an intense uh, onboarding process that makes you very, very ready, willing, and able to get full value from your investment in business storytelling masterclass. To incent you to comply with our, our desired uh, timeframe, we want to give you a couple of uh, valuable uh, uh, bonuses. The first is a series of tutorials. These tutorials are specifically designed to help you get ready for Business Storytelling Masterclass, but they have much broader application than just Business Storytelling Masterclass. The tutorials range from uh, 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 setting you up with, uh, with a studio where you're recording audio and video is top notch, uh, where you can convert your script into text using uh, talk to text technology, uh, where uh, we have little video production tips to share uh, and where you get to use Google Calendar to make the peer group arrangement work very efficiently. The second bonus is three months membership in the Business Storytelling Masterclass Extension Program. That's a mouthful, so we shortened it to BSMX. BSM, Business Storytelling Masterclass Extension X. Members of this program uh, meet for meet on the third Saturday of every month. They meet at nine o'clock Pacific time for a 30 second ed session followed by telling and evaluating stories. They also receive one hour of private coaching every month. The regular tuition fee for BSMX is $290. So three months is worth $870. So what's your next step? Your next step is to visit that URL and at that URL, which Renee is typing into the chat, at that URL, you can claim the gift that we promised you and that we know you'll love and either register for be a Business Storytelling Masterclass or book a clarity call with me. The purpose of the clarity call is to answer your questions privately and to see if we are a good fit. Uh, we do not want to onboard a student who is simply, this is just not going to work. That's not what we, that's not why we are in business. Now, there's a couple of questions that are pretty much always asked at every presentation that Renee and I give. The first question is time. What is the time commitment for, for students to participate in this course? This is a difficult uh, question to answer because while the class, the peer group, and the showcase are tightly defined times, the crafting and telling of your stories, if you want doing your homework, is a variable amount of time. And I have seen students take one hour a week, and I have seen students take 10 hours a week. Uh, uh, so think in terms of a minimum of uh, four hours a week for six weeks, but that number could be higher depending on how aggressive you are in terms of crafting and telling uh, your stories. Now, what happens after you've done Business Storytelling Masterclass? Uh, you actually have no less than three options. The first option is you can take a break from us. The second option is that you can be active in BSMX. The third option is that you can enroll in Business Presentations Masterclass. And in that course, most students have a specific talk that needs to be world-class that they have to prepare for several months ahead. Into Business Storytelling, Business Presentations Masterclass, we inject some of the stories that you have created in Business Storytelling Masterclass. After you have finished Business Presentations Masterclass, then we can have a conversation 
about you doing a Get Inspired talk. And that involves you sharing a solution, a creative solution to one of humanity's pressing problems uh, with the world. We promised, time check, 7.55. We promised that this would be a 60 minute talk maximum. It's now 7.55. So I'm going to draw the formal portion of this talk to a close. Renee and I thank you for remaining with us to the very end. And we just cannot wait for, uh, to, to be your chosen guides and companions on your storytelling journey. Thank you I've all. Entered, I've entered the link to the gift so that everyone has access to the video and also a PDF document.